In this lecture, we are going to start working on the user schema. So let's get started. I'm going to create a folder and I will call it model. Now inside the models folder, we're going to be setting up the user model. So you're going to see me call it schema or model most of the time. It's just a representation of the database table on in our code, right? So I'm going to create a file user. I'll call it user model. Okay. Dot TS like this. Now to set up the user model, I'm going to import our database. So I'll call it db from the slash inside the import database like this and then index. So that is what I bring in, bring in. And you can avoid this index. You can just omit, you can omit it like this. It still works perfectly fine. And another thing I'm going to be bringing in is going to be the user model. So I'm going to import the user model from our interface because it will help us specify the types. So interface I user model, right? I'll bring it in. And I think that works for us, right? So I'm going to go on and create the user model, const user model. And the, the method in creating this, this is also available in the documentation. I'm going to be using the define method. So I'll say define like this. And I'm going to specify that you should follow you know, this set of attributes. And I would also specify the, the name of the model. So I'll say user model like this. And the next thing is passing in. You have to pass in all the attributes that are related to that. So it will be expecting the, the attributes that match what's what's within here. So let's let's get started. The first is the ID, right, which is supposed to be auto generated, right? I'm going to specify that this would be taking a type of um, UUID, which is I would have to bring in there is there is actually something called data types in in um, SQLize. So I will bring it in data types in SQLize. And these data types and SQLize would, you know, inform me about the, the available data types in SQLize. So I'll say data types dot UUID, right, which is what I want to be using. And the default value, I would actually import the UUID. I already installed it, you know, earlier. So there's this UUID here, which is a package that helps you, like, generate, you know, random, you know, alphanumeric characters. So I'm going to import it. UUID, I'll import V4 as UUID V4 like this. And I'm going to say from. So it has different versions and they work you know, kind of differently. So what I'm going to be using in version 4, I'll say default values. Default values. Value like this. And I would be creating on insertion, I would actually be creating this this on insertion like this, right? And then I'm going to say allow null. Allow null. Do I want to allow null here? False, right? And do I want it to be my primary key? Primary key, I would specify true. I want it to be my primary key. So that is it for this. You know, I'm going to move on to the next property, which is the username. Right, and the username I would specify the types. Let me just take this right. So I'm going to I'm just going to take this, paste it here, copy and paste. Then the types I'm expecting for the username is going to be string. It's not going to be taking any default value. Do I allow no false? Right. I want it to also be unique. I'm going to enter unique here. Then the next one is I will copy this again, paste. I'm going to specify first name, or should I put which one is the first one here before the interface? I'm going for it. So we'll go with password. So I'm going to specify password. And let me, let me close this up. We we'll specify password like this. And password will just take a data type of null. And do I want to allow null? Right? Let me just allow null for password, even though it's not that necessary. Right? Then I'm going to specify take this username again, paste it. Then I'm going to look in our first name and string, you know, allow no. There's the allow no. I'll say false because I would insert this on creation. So we need it. And allow no should also be false here, right? So there's no need for making it true. 
I'll say last name, right? Last name takes takes the same takes the same pattern. And next thing is going to be email. The email should be unique, so I'll say unique as well should be through like this. And then the next thing I would use would be the rule, right? Rule. I would I would actually allow no for rule. So if nothing is provided, it should just take no by default. And also is email verified? It's email verified, right? And is a data string? I will also allow no for that. Then the next one I'm going to be picking is account status. Account status. Right? And it's string. And it's also going to allow no. So then we have created that. Right? And we also have um, updated that. But these guys are going to be picking on a type of updated ads they're going to be taking a type of you know, date so i'll say type of dates there are many types of dates to work with in mysql we have timestamp and so many other ones so it depends so i'll just specify that the default default values right for for this which is something similar here i'll take it default values and this should actually take the date type just now, right? And also the same should should go for allow no. Should I make it false? Yep, I will do that. False. All right. So the same should go for this guy. Allow no should also be false. Okay. So now the the last value that this guy takes in is takes on some some information here like. Timestamp, I'll have to set it through, right? And it also takes a table name. So what do I want the name of the table to be? I actually want it to be called users, right? And I want to map the created apps and updated that to, to this particular, you know, field. So that, that should work in case you didn't know, you don't want to name it created app. Let's say you named it something different, right? You could map it to the, the field you want it to, to be mapped to. So I would take this and I'll say updated ads. So it works. Now we have this, I all I just need to do is export, export the, the user model. So I'm gonna take this, export default, right? And I'll export the user model. Now, if you look at our database here, this is our current database and you can see Kodai Bank database there is there is no table inside here right so we have to register we have to register the new model we just created within the within the database so that it could be easily created automatically once we start up our server so to do that we go into the database side and i'm going to bring in the model so i'll say import user model right and when i bring it in i just need to come down here after the author authorization I would call user model dot sync there's a function called sync there so you can pass an alter if you want it to alter anytime you make a change to the model properties if you want it to like automatically update it on the database you can do that but for now I'm just going to set it false right but instead of server it should actually you know create this record on the database so to try that out Let's run our server again, npm run dev. And let's wait a bit. So it's a sorry, let's go back, refresh this. We should have the user table within here. All right, so we have a user, have a user table within, within this place. If you click on it, you should have the structure of this. You should have everything we specified here. And the constraints we added, they are all available here. So I think we are good to go, right? We are good to go. In the next lecture, we will be setting up the controllers, the routes, and, you know, all the necessary services that is needed.